All right, folks, listen, it's that time of the year, right? So now we're going to start doing them hearty, you know, those meals, something to stick to your rib, warm you up, and keep you warm through this uh, this cold season, right? Today, I'm going to show you how to make just a easy and simple. All of the ingredients is readily available. No matter where you live, we're making a Cajun-style chili. Let's get it. Okay, so listen, now you guys can see that, you know, there's a few ingredients, meaning to me that these ingredients mean that it's going to be, you know, like just over the top leveled up and just like super delicious right and it's gonna give you that cajun feel this right here is gonna do it because you know i use that creole kick i always use fire roasted uh diced tomatoes then we got black eyed peas right so let me go ahead and get everything set up and i'm gonna show you just how easy it is to make right now let's talk about this the protein as i put fire underneath the bottom here to heat up my cast iron now listen most chilies is made with ground beef then second i'll say people try to use uh brisket stuff like that listen i'm gonna go ahead and use i'm gonna keep up with the whole cajun theme you know cooking you know feeding big large families and stuff like that and when you think about that being down south everybody uses a lot of chicken right so we're gonna use chicken now i'm not gonna boil the chicken i'm gonna go ahead and pan fry get some color on it right and seeing how i'm using boneless skinless chicken thighs which you guys can see right here already been washed and clean i put a paper towel in here just to pick up any of the residual you know uh, water that you know washes off of this right so as this comes up we're gonna pan fry it we're gonna get it nice soft and you know what it doesn't matter we're gonna get it almost cooked reason being once we put it in the chili and then cook it over an hour everything is just gonna be nice folks all right so i'm gonna put a little infused olive oil in here this is garlic infused made by branch and vine i keep that i'm actually getting ready to fill that back up right now let me go ahead and get me myself a you know paper towel just to pat down the tops right i'm not getting ready to do no cleanup you guys can if you would like but i would say no even this little fat that's on here Look at this, that right there, that brings flavor to everything, right? So I'm gonna start with the bottom side down. All right, so this is my Creole kick. This is gonna be like the base for us getting, you know, that, that, that Southern Cajun slash Creole, you know, taste, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this on here on the top, right? Now this is a low sodium product. You know what I mean? So we don't have to worry about anything uh, as far as like over salting or anything like that. So we control our salt. So what I'm going to do is, I got some kosher salt here. I'm going to add just a little bit over here on the top and let that just work its way in as it cooks, right? Now, how do we know that the bottom is going to be cooked? I'm going to tell you the telltale sign is anytime you're cooking with cast iron or any pan, to be honest with you, when your protein doesn't stick and it's free, then you can go ahead and flip it. Now, we're not trying to cook it all the way through on one side, right? I'm not going to add no pepper to it. You guys know I like pepper, but if we put pepper on here when we flip it, it's really going to give it that dark, you know, dark tone. Now, while we letting this sit and, you know, go ahead, you know, start to cook down and form some nice color on the bottom side and some crust, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, you know, my splash guard on the top. Now, this right here keeps, obviously, it keeps. If you guys don't have these, I say get one especially if you're the one that's going around here cleaning up everything around there. But it keeps you safe in the kitchen. You don't have to worry about slipping. It keeps all the grease in the inside of there. Hey, these are a must have. So I want you guys to pay attention to this right here. You see this right here? I keep this for my rag. We finna do a GMA style. Put it over the shoulder and we finna work, folks. Now, let's do this. I'm gonna take this, move it over. You see how it's not sticking now? When I first put it down, it was. So now I'm gonna just turn this over. When you do boneless, skinless chicken thighs, it's a little bit on the thin side. You know what I mean? Uh, I can see, and if you guys look right here, look, you can see that by having this piece right here, that it didn't really cook down in there, but that's okay. We're gonna cook everything in the chili. Right now, we just forming some crust, right? Just bring this closer to the center. You know what I mean? And uh, that right there is what gives it the flavor, folks. All right, so listen, what you want to do is you want to multitask, right? We're still getting the chicken together. Now, don't, I don't know if I said this earlier, but you do not have to use, you know, boneless, skinless chicken. I could have used ground chicken. I could have used uh, ground beef. You know what I mean? If you guys are making brisket, you could have cut some. If you had some extra, you could have went ahead and used that. You know what I mean? Just to get your protein right, right? And to be honest with you, you don't have to use no meat at all, you know what I mean? Outside of your andouille sausage. All right, so the chicken is about ready. 
I'm sure. We'll check to make sure it's not sticking on the bottom side. You know what I mean? Letting me know that we got the nice color that we want. I'm going to check it. Now, I'm going to set this off to the side. I'm going to bring my andouille into play. Before I start cutting that down, let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and just turn my fire off. I know it's right. You know what I mean? Let's go ahead and look at the bottom of it. Look at that right here. We got some nice color. You can see how the seasoning starts to cook in. Oh, yeah. Oh, and just to show you, you know what I mean? I, it's a little bit of stickage, but it's ready. You got to look at that down there. We got a little fine. But we want all of that in there. I'm going to show you how we're going to get that. Right? So everything is off. We'll just let it rest. I'll put the splatter guard on the top. We'll come back over here to this and do it. Now, the reason I'm going to do it this way is because I just want to show you guys. It's up to you how you want to cut this. Depends on how fine you want it to be. But I'm going to go ahead and just cut them in these little circle medallions. I know some people like to cut them so they have different, you know, different angle cuts on them and all of that. Now we move on to the next part, right? So we, I'm going to cut this down, you know what I mean? But for right now, actually, I'm going to just stage these over here inside of my Dutch oven, right? Because you can cut them down and do them into cubes, but I don't suggest doing that. I want you guys to follow the way I do it, because once I get it nice, it's going to be nice and soft after we cook this for about an hour, hour and a half, and it's going to be so easy. We can just shred it. Everybody get some chicken and all of that, right? Now, if you guys pay attention to this right here, for those of you guys that have been with me for a minute, you know what we call that down there? Look, I'll run this across this. That's the fine, right? Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the fire back under here. Right now, I'm running with like a medium. This is like a medium, almost a medium high, right? So let me go ahead and get my, my square edge, because this is my tool of choice, right? So we got an onion right here. I had this onion out here just to show you guys. You guys can do it a couple different ways. I like to dice down an onion, you know what I mean? For one, I'm gonna start with this first, just to give it, you know, its head start, right? So we'll let this absorb any chicken that was in here, any of the chicken fat that had, you know, rendered down. Look at that, you see how it turns color? That's the seasoning from when we were flipping. This is how I can tell you that we know, this is how you guys can know, and this is how I can see when somebody cooking, or are we gonna be able to have like an amazing product, right? So after one minute of that going, then we are gonna go ahead and we are gonna introduce, you know, our bell peppers. So now we go ahead and introduce our bell peppers. Right, now I'm not cooking these all the way down like you guys would think. This just helps me get some of that flavor up, right? Some of the fine, let's, use, let's call it what it is. We'll move this around now. You know what I mean? We'll let the acids in the oil, I mean in the onion, you know, do its thing to help bring up anything that's in there, down there on the bottom. Now, you remember our medallions, our andouille sausage? We're gonna add that flavor in here too. This is gonna add the grease to it, right? And if you guys hear any noise, I want you to take a look over this way. You see this right here? I did not have my hot water, right? My hot soapy water, but now I do. I keep this here because I like to wash my dishes as I go. And because I started seeing everything starting to pile up right here, you know what I mean? These are just good practices. We're gonna be cooking during this uh, fall season and going into this holiday. You know what I mean? Uh, so we want it to be as easy as possible, right? Okay, so I minced my garlic, put this on the top right here. You know what I mean? Reason being, I want this to be able to just work on the top, not so much as hit the bottom, you know what I mean, so that it doesn't burn, right? So now I'm gonna add the rest of my ingredients to this here. And this is the chili powder. You know what I mean? I'm gonna go ahead and just add that. You know, and just work it in like this. I'm gonna reduce my heat down to medium. You know, to be honest with you, let's go ahead and turn it off. Now that it's off, and I got it. This is not the traditional way you're gonna make uh, chili, but we're gonna make it this way because we're gonna extract all of them flavors out. Instead of letting the heat do all the work, we finna let it sear, you know, form a crust, pick up the fine, and all of this goes into chili also. This right here, you see that right there? Look at our andouille, look. See the andouille? Yes, sir. One more time. Uh-huh. If you ain't never had chili made like this before, talk to me, folks, and let me know what would you do to make this even better. Okay, so once I have everything up like this, you guys can see, we got the chicken in the inside. Let's go ahead and just bring this down. Look at all of those flavors. Okay, now that we got veggies and dewy, we got chicken in here, you know, some seasonings. We still got a little chili powder left. This is the main additive that we want to put in here, and that's going to be your Cajun seasoning, right? You guys know I use Creole Kick. 
links for it everywhere. I got a medium flame underneath the bottom here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by, and I did not drain none of my liquid, right? These are my fire roasted tomatoes. We're gonna go ahead and just get that in here. The reason I do that, because when you put the heat under the bottom, you'll hear it just start to cook. You know what I mean? We don't want nothing to start sticking, right? And again, I already did say I started with uh, a medium flame. Now I want you guys to look at that. Look at the colors. You saw what we did. We did something a little different. You know, we like cooked it down just like, you know, Cajun and Creole style. We used that cast iron. We started getting, you know, uh, bumping up them flavors, right? Browning and doing all of that, right? So that's in there. Now, let's talk about the black eyed peas. I've already drained these. Now you can do it two ways. You guys, if you have an emo immersion blender, you know what I mean? You guys can go ahead and puree these now, or you can put these inside of here and let them cook, get even softer, and then you can take some out and then mash them in something like this. I'll show you guys. I'm gonna do mine that way. I have an, a blender, you know what I mean, that will do it, but I just wanna show you guys how to just come up with this nice, nice flavor, right? Now I done raised my fire up. I went to high now because I have some liquid down on the bottom. What we want to do is get this back to a boil anyway, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my, my chicken stock. Look at the color. I haven't done nothing, but just, you know, halfway stirred. It's just mixed in on its own, right? Now we'll bring in the rest of our ingredients. Now we're gonna bring in that fire. And that's this right here, the Creole kick. Now, that's one tablespoon. Let me ask you guys and answer this question down at the bottom. Tell me this, how many teaspoons in a tablespoon? Don't cheat, don't be asking Google. Just let me know. Let me see how are we learning. Okay, so if you guys pay attention, we coming up to a boil. What I'm gonna do is set this down. Let's lower this temperature, because we want to simmer this. We just want to cook this for about, I'm gonna say 30 to 45 minutes. We don't have all that ground beef or none of that uh, brisket, nothing like that in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add, you know, these bay leaves. I just put them right underneath. They rehydrate and release theirs in there also. But you see this right here? This is gonna make for ooh wee, folks. And then I'm gonna shred this down. That chicken, where he at? There he is. Stay tuned, folks. See you in a minute. All right, so let me go ahead and get my pot holder. Cause listen, my timer done went off. Whew. Look at that right there. Just look at the color, folks. That right there ought to do it for you, right? Just there. And that kind of like raised up just a little bit. When I see a simmer, it'll settle down back down to a simmer. But look at this right here. All right? But before we even shred, you remember I told you I like to cook mine down. That's up to you how you want to do it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to add this to this four cup Pyrex, right? Now you guys put it in whatever you want to, because what I want to do is I just want to mash a little bit, right? And we're going to use that as a thickener, you know, and then we can let this go ahead and continue to simmer with the top off, right? Making sure that we stir so that we don't have no flare ups and burn nothing onto the bottom, right? Now what I'm going to do is I use the back end, the back side of the ladle, right? I go ahead and just push this down just like you see. I'm really just mashing the, you know, the black eyed peas. Now that was the only peas in there. You guys do it however you would like to do it. But the end result is that we want to have it as thick as we like it to be. And the reason I'm saying it that way, cause some of you guys like it super thick and some doesn't like it that way. You know what I mean? So however you like it, you can get your result, you know, customized to yourself. But you see that? All we do is reintroduce that back into the pot. Now we take this, run this around the sides, you know, get anything off. Having a spatula at the ready is just the greatest thing anyway, because everything that we put inside this Pyrex, we want to get it out, right? So don't forget, we leave the top off, and then we're going to shred some of that chicken down. And as we do this, we let it continue to cook, and it just starts to thicken up. All right, so what I've been doing now was just looking for my my bay leaf, right? Remember how dry they were? That was dry. Look how hydrated it is, but it didn't release that flavor, you know, back inside. So I'm gonna keep my fire on. Last thing we wanna do is, we wanna go ahead and get that chicken out, right? And I got two forks over here. Don't worry about if anything, you pull more of your chili out, right? 
than, you know, than chicken, no worries, because everything's going back. You know what I mean? But I just want to get these bigger chunks out. I just want to shred them down, reintroduce. And I promise you guys, I got some rice that's already ready. You know what I mean? With his name on it. All right, so we got some of that chicken out of there. You know what I mean? So when I say, remember how it was? Remember we talked about like it's going to cook in the chili, absorb everything. But you see how this shreds like this? You don't need to cut it. You don't need to do anything to it. Listen, it just breaks up. So all I can tell you is you can hear it in my tone. You know, my voice, right? I am ready to eat, folks. Okay, so I just shredded it up. <clears throat> As you guys can see, I don't want to shred it and just get an individual line. You know what I mean? Like that. We still want to be able to have some type of integrity and at least get some chicken in there, right? But all of this is part of like, you know, helping with the thickening process too, right? And it just makes it like over the top and good, you know? Now it should start to, you know, look like what you guys think it should look like. You know what I mean? When I see a Cajun chili, look at this right here. Look at that. Okay, folks, so listen, we're going to be doing a lot of cooking, you know, during this fall season, holiday season, right? So I just want to show you guys this. I'm not going to cut this off of there. I'm going to show you how we can just have endless green onions, right? So I'm going to turn this around up here at the top. I'm just going to go ahead and start doing, you know, cutting some of these down. Now, I'm doing this right now because I love to have... You know, the green onion, especially when it comes to chili. You know what I mean? It brings a splash of that green. You know, it just makes your dish pop, right? Now, you see, I got a mason jar right here, and I cut these. I left the roots on here. If you guys didn't know, you know, you could take these. Even if we cut these off and went outside, planted those, put some water on it, and in a few days, it'll start sprouting, right? So, but I'm going to show you how we're going to do it, you know, for here. Okay, so now I got myself a mason jar, right? You guys can use whatever kind of jar you have, or even a cup doesn't make, doesn't make a difference, right? Now, I fill this up with the water, right? Remember, I cut down my, the tops of the green onions, right? I'm just gonna drop these in just like you see. I don't wanna submerge the top, but you see that right there? Now I'm gonna go put them outside somewhere where they can get light and all of that. And I'm gonna keep giving this fresh water like about every other day, you know what I mean? And then watch what happens. This is gonna grow me new tops and we finna take over from there. So every time we cut onions down, we just gonna add them here and we gonna make sure we keep fresh water in there so it's oxygenated. And eventually we could take these and just plant them like you guys can get a bucket, do a project with your family, you know what I mean? Especially with the young ones and teach them how to like grow something. And we can just grow green onions for the rest of our lives. Okay folks, so listen, what you guys are seeing right now is like I put my little, this is my background because I gotta take a picture that's appealing to everybody across YouTube and Google and all of that, right? So showing you guys some of my tricks that I use. I haven't been doing them as of late. If you look at some of my past thumbnails, that's how they are. But now I'm getting ready to go ahead and take this chili. You know what I mean? And instead of me putting it on top of my rice, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it, you know, right here, right? I can tell you right now, I hadn't really said too much about the aromatic that's coming off. I done had a couple people come ring the doorbell and they were just talking to him and it was like, hey man, as soon as they get in the inside, they wanna know, hey, what is that? Right, so you can hear it in my tone, right? We put that down there. You can see the chicken, the andouille sausage. You know what I mean? You can see, you know, black eyed peas. You see the fire roasted. Now I'm finna take this. What I did was I just got one of my ramekins that I always, you know, measure everything out. I use that. I spray it with a nonstick spray, pack my rice in, and then I put it over the top, just like this. And then you guys know that I already, you know, like to use, you know, green onion. Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of this over here like this. Now I got a set of tweezers that I, you know, do. This is more like a gourmet type uh, presentation, you know what I mean? Uh, this is a restaurant, right? But you guys let me know how would you do yours, right? I could get some tweezers, like I say, and then place them however I want to or whatever like that. But that right there is going to be fire, folks. All right, folks, look, I'm all, you know, plated up. Got my mound of rice right there, you know what I mean? But look at that on the side right there. And again, like I said, I hadn't really been saying nothing about the aromatic that's coming off of this right here. This like just changes what you guys think about having the chili. It's not spicy like some of you guys think. It's got a little bit of a bite to it. If I was gonna say if it was kid friendly, kid friendly, one to five, five being like super spicy, I get it's like a one and a half. This is nice, mild, and smooth. Now, with that being said, oh, before I go ahead and take my bite, hey, look, this is for my old school folks right here. Hey, how many of y'all used to eat chili and have it with the ribs, right? 
And then some of y'all, you know, it was, what was it? It was the Ritz. And then what was it? It was the saltine crackers. Now, I got it. Everybody go back and go. They did way back. And then probably say, hey, we do it with the cornbread. You know what I mean? But this right here screams just old school. You can go either way. I feel like I'm over talking. So let's get it, folks. With a little andouille. Cheers, y'all. Where I got the best job in the world, right? Listen, I get to teach you guys how to make these recipes. I get to sample it, all different stages, you know what I mean? Come up with whatever, and then put it out to the world, and you guys come back, because when you taste this one here, I promise you, you're finna pop your collar, tell the world about it, and you're coming back to tell me, A.V., you did your thing on this one. Now listen, that pause that I had in the very beginning, I was just trying to think of what would I say to describe this. Nothing else I can say, because when I say it's fire, that's what I mean. Now, you guys saw it. I know you got to make it. You got to come back and then talk to me. But from what you guys saw, tell me what would you do to make this, you know, a little bit over more over the top. Now, don't forget, the full recipe, which is printable, is on my website, smokingandgrillingwithab.com, and that's W-I-T-A-B.com. Again, try this, folks. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say, hey, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button to tell everybody out there there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And you know what I'm about to do. Pour me a cold one, sit down and eat, and I'm out. Peace.